All right, so here we go. We're going to do a, uh, a little online lecture uh, using AutoCAD Electrical. Uh, talk a little bit about uh, uh, catalog parts and uh, the bill of materials in AutoCAD Electrical. Uh, we'll start off by uh, opening up a, a template in AutoCAD Electrical. So I'm actually going to close out my AutoCAD Electrical for a second here and reopen it just so you guys can see me go through the same process and uh, hopefully you'll follow along at, uh, at home and you may want to pause this video and do a couple steps and watch me do the steps then pause it again and so on and so forth uh, it can be hard to listen unless you or to do live unless you have two screens going so I've got a couple of templates created for uh, AutoCAD Electrical uh, for Dunwoody College Technology um, so as an example, uh, this one's actually got some stuff saved in it here. I'm just going to delete this out of here real quick. All right. And so this is our template for, Dun for Dunwoody College. We have both a, a horizontal template and a vertical template. So a vertical template gives me a little bit more space top to bottom, and it puts the title bar on the right-hand side. And the horizontal template is kind of your traditional model with the title bar and all your information on the bottom. Um, so anyways, what we'll do is we're going to start off by just creating a simple ladder diagram. We'll consider this a, uh, a PLC input module that somebody's going to be wiring up out in the field. And so what we'll do is we'll, do, we'll add a ladder, insert our ladder into our diagram here. Uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to create the spacing at 0.4. I could always change this later on if I wanted to. I just happen to know that a 0.4 spacing for this particular template works out pretty well for me. So I'm going to go ahead and hit 0.4, make sure I'm on single phase, so I get a nice clean ladder. And then once I click on that, I can go up to the top up here somewhere, and I can just drag my ladder down about like that. And again, it's going to br bring a ladder, and it's going to connect all the rungs up together. This is fine, um, because when we insert our parametric uh, module of the PLC input module, it's going to just kind of insert itself in there and it's going to take care of all the wiring for us. So that's the nice part about this. The one thing I do like to do, though, uh, before I go much further, is I like to insert some, uh, uh, some reference arrows on the top. So I'll go to the icon menu. In the icon menu, I'll go to miscellaneous, and then I'll go to wire arrows for reference only. And I like using this little arrow tail up and just bringing that guy in um, and placing him kind of on the top of this. Uh, rung and calling this plus 24, this rail rather, plus 24 volts DC. So we'll identify that rail as a 24 volt DC rail, and then we'll go over to the other one and we'll do something similar. Now the nice thing is, once I've used a symbol, it shows up in my recently used over here, which is really handy. I don't have to go drill through that sub menu again, looking for that component. Um, so I'll place that guy there, and I'll put this as a zero volt common. I do like to use all caps on stuff like that. And I can see that those are labeled out the way I'd like them. And then the next thing I'd, I'd be likely to do is go ahead and insert my PLC module. For the sake of this exercise, I'm going to click up here, right up here at the top, where it says PLC Parametric, again in my schematic tab. And under PLC Parametric, I'm going to go in and pick a 1769 uh, IQ16. So it's a DC syncing input module with 16 points. I'm going to place that guy, because it's an input module, the inputs are going to go to the left of it, so the module should go to the right. It doesn't have to be all the way over, but a little ways over, if it makes sense. It's going to identify, it's going to, it's going to parametrically identify that the spacing is at 0.4, so we'll let it use that, which is what it's at. And then it's also going to identify that uh, it's going to allow you to choose which module number, so maybe this is my first slot or slot one in my rack. And then it's going to have you pick a... a uh, beginning address. Because you pick slot 1, it's going to give you a quick pick here, which is actually kind of handy. I'll just do slot 1, bit 0. And that's going to go ahead and it's going to place it in there. It's going to ask you, do you want your addressing in octal, decimal, or hexadecimal? So I'm going to do decimal. What that means is, you know, if you're doing octal, you're only counting 0 through 7, and then you're counting 0 through 7 for that next octal character. Um, but I don't want to do that. I just want decimal, so it'd be like 0 through 15. And you'll see that'll come in now as 0 through 15. Now, one of the things I don't like that you'll see um, when we're working with a, a module like this is you've got to be kind of careful where you place this thing in your, in your diagram. One of the things I don't like up here is that it's, it's, off the, it's really off the drawing, actually. 
So what I'd like to do is, is just kind of use a window selection tool, which is just left click at the top and draw a big blue box around everything that's in there. And at that point then you can grab any part of this and you can drag the whole thing down. And now all of a sudden I'm like, oh, it fits in there. And you might also say, you know what though? I, I don't even need this many rungs. So if I don't need this many rungs, the other thing I could do is I could use that same window selection tool and just draw a window selection, hit escape a couple times there, around these two bottom rungs. And a window selection is only gonna highlight the things that are completely contained in the window selection. That's different than if I was to do a uh, crossing selection, which is to left click down here and drag up to left. If I do a crossing selection, anything that's touched, you can see is getting highlighted. So you can see the whole rail, all of those inputs are getting highlighted, right? Um, it's kind of nice to have both of these tools available, but this is definitely not the tool I want for this one. I don't want to delete everything in my, in my diagram. So I only want to delete the things that are fully contained. And so when I hit delete, those are going to delete. If I want to readjust those rungs, it's actually pretty easy to do. I can just go to that rail and I can just drag up and click, click on this rail and I can drag up and click. And there's a lot of tools out there that can make you a little more productive on doing stuff like that. But the benefit of what we just did is it gave me even more real estate. As I look at this drawing itself, I could even drag this down a little further if I wanted to, right? I could say, oh, I got a little more room to the bottom now. Um, and now I'm sitting really good. Another thing you could do is you could scale the drawing as well. I, I, it's a little more dangerous um, just because when you insert the next piece, you're gonna wanna scale it the same way. And if you didn't scale it the same way, uh, it's, it's, you're gonna end up with two modules that look to be at different scales. But moving it around and shortening it up and kind of knowing how much real estate you have is gonna make, it's gonna be your best bet when doing something like this. The other thing I don't like about this particular drawing is there's a whole lot of activity up here, right? Um, I don't, I don't necessarily need to, I mean, already it's, it's overwriting my, my, uh, I've got comments and tags that are sitting on top of each other, which just makes for a messy drawing. So first and foremost, I don't need this. So I'm going to delete this 24 volt DC 16. It's just a description tag is all it is. And I'm going to delete the MicroLogix one too. You might say, well, you know, it seems like you'd want those. Well, actually, first off, I know this is a DC syncing input module because I can see it's 24 volt DC being switched to the input and it's syncing on the other side, right? It's going back to ground. And then the other thing is if I want to look up anything, all I really need is that Allen Bradley catalog number 1769-IQ16. That'll tell me exactly what that module is. All this did for me, it was it cleaned up the drawing a little bit so I don't have all these all this extra descriptive data. It's up to me to select what I want. I mean, you could even say, EJ, well, let's, you know, you get rid of the module one because I know it's I colon one slash zero. Sure, you could, um, but that one isn't really getting in the way, so I don't mind that one as much. Um, so now let's go ahead and get into the meat and potatoes of this thing now. So what we want to do now is we want to insert some components into our drawing. So I'm going to go to the icon menu and I'm going to go to push buttons and I'm going to grab a normally open push button. Now this is where we've always done this. We've always went ahead and dropped the normally open push button onto our drawing here and it works out great. And up until now, because we've just been kind of learning the, the nuts and bolts of AutoCAD, we haven't actually put any catalog data in there, right? Um, it's kind of like when you're drawing wires and you haven't been concerned with the wire color, or the wire size. It's the same thing. We haven't been concerned with, you know, who manufactures this push button or what the part number is or anything like that. But today we're going to do that. Um, we're going to actually, when we come into this menu, when we insert the component, you see, you get this little look up here under catalog data, you get this little look up button. So you can look it up and now you can go in here and you can see all these Allen Bradley buttons. Now I know that that button's a normally open push button. So I'm gonna scroll over and I'm just gonna look to see, ah, here's one with a normally open contact on it. So I'll just pick this one randomly. In the real world, we wanna pick the, the actual catalog data for the buttons that have been specced. So if there's a specific button that you know you want to use size-wise, uh, you know, maybe, uh, 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 you know, the contact pairs and stuff like that or voltage rating, you want to make sure you pick that and this color all these things are things that come in with this right um, but for, for the sake of today i'm just gonna use this 800h uh, b 
BR61 is what I'm going to use. This is going to be, I have no idea what this button is, how much it costs or anything, or even if it's available for that matter. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And now that button data came for free. So that's kind of nice. So let's do another one. Let's go into the icon menu. We'll grab a stop button or a normally close push button this time. And I'll place this guy in here. Uh, again, just place him on that rung right where he goes. We'll look up the data for him. Now I'm going to look for something that has a normally closed contact associated with it. You know, and I, I could go down and maybe here's one that looks good, normally closed. Uh, it's same size, 30.5 millimeters, so it's probably a good button to pick. Uh, it's rated at 120 volts AC, so I'll, I'll hit OK. I'll hit OK. Now you'll get this every once in a while. It's going to come up and say, hey, would you like to map this to the catalog number? And what that means is, let's say that you guys always use a normally closed push button with this part number. Um, in that case, you could map that symbol to the catalog number so that every time you drop a normally closed push button on your drawing, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to automatically map to that catalog number. It doesn't mean you can't change it. Uh, you just go back into lookup. Um, but I don't want to map it. I, I prefer just to leave that blank, and, and I'll select it when I need to. So there's a couple normally open push buttons that I like. Um, let's maybe grab a, I don't know, let's grab a proxy. Uh, let's do a couple more push buttons just to make it kind of interesting here. Uh, we'll do another normally open push button. And one of the things I'll do this time is I'll go pick a button, but I'll show you a little bit, of, a little bit of, and maybe I'll pick something different. So I've got, this one's got a normally open and a normally closed contact. But the fact that I'm putting it in as a normally open push button, I'm only going to use the normally open contact. So when someone's wiring this up, they should know that they're using it as normally open. But the thing I want to show you right now is I, I got my catalog data in there, right? If I want to place that button more than once, I can do this OK repeat. And so now when I hit OK repeat, it's just going to let me pick and drop another button. But it's going to come with that same catalog information. And I can do that as many times as I want until I run out of rungs, I guess, would be the only time I couldn't do it anymore, um, and then hit OK. Now, one thing that happened here that was a little bit funky here, kind of on accident, but I don't have a snap going on or anything like that right now, but what you'll notice is the buttons 4, 5, 6, and 7, they all break the line where they're inserted. Uh, actually, buttons 3, 4, 5, and 6. Um, what you'll notice, and I don't know why my button came in as 3, but that's fine. Um, I noticed that push button seven did not get inserted correctly in, into my ladder here. So one of the things I may have to do is um, I could, you know, it would be pretty easy just to delete that component out if I wanted to. Um, uh, sure, no, I, I don't have any devices associated with it. And I could just say, you know what, I want to come back in. Or you know what, I think I can even click on this button. Uh, no, I guess I can't. Can I go in here? Nope, I can't. Once it's there, I can't do that. But I can go into the icon menu, grab that push button again, uh, place it. And this time, I'm going to ensure that those little pads are actually going to hit the wire. As long as they hit the wire, I'm good to go. And I go back and find that first normally open, normally close button. It's this guy here. Hit OK, and now he's in there. So now I can see I've got all my buttons. And oh, by the way, um, part of the reason why my tags are off is likely that... Uh, by changing some of the spacing or something here, I, I got off a little bit. If you ever wanted to change a tag or if you're off, you could just go back in here and just change this tag. Maybe this wants to be push button one. You know, now that's good. Uh, whoop, it didn't take. Hold on a second here. So instead of push button three, it's going to be push button one. Hit apply. And then go to here, and this could be push button two. It's, it's really quick and easy. Oop, I got like my window selection tool there going. Oh. Come on now. There we go. And so this guy here, he should have a tag on him somewhere. There, it's called push button four, but we want it to actually be push button two. Hit apply, okay. And this could be push button five, but we want it to be push button three. Apply, okay. And you can get the, the, the scenario there as to how I uh, could have been a little more careful when I was dumping these in here and I would have been just fine. But in the big scheme of things, it takes about 30 seconds, and I've got all of those fixed now. All right, so there's my push buttons. Kind of like where that's heading now. I'm going to go back and look and see what else some of the stuff I wanted to do here. So we're going to do a bill of materials. But before we do that, let's add, let's add a few other components just to create some diversity of components here. 
Uh, we'll, we'll add uh, from the icon menu, we'll add a couple limit switches. So I'm going to go into the limit switches from the icon menu. I'm going to do a normally open limit switch. This will give me some, uh, uh, again, I can zoom in and find where that thing's going to go and break the line. And then we'll go to look up. And now you see a different manufacturer. I see GE listed in here. And you can actually download additional databases with AutoCAD Electrical. I'll save that for a future lecture. Um, but I know this is a normally open limit switch. And I'm not going to get into a ton of details on it, but most limit switches have a normally open and normally closed contact. So I'll pick the first one here, hit OK, and I'll hit OK repeat. I'll put two of these guys in here just because I can. And this is a good time when if I knew what my rung was, right, I could look at this LS number and make sure that that's actually coming in correctly, which it wasn't. Um, I could go in here and change this to LS6 and changes to LS7. And as long as I know what rung I'm on when I'm coming in, that would make the most sense. All right. And both of those do have data associated with them now, right? So um, I can see down here, I've got a manufacturer, I've got a catalog number. And without me doing that, none of that data would be there. So as an example, if all I did was place a normally open contact limit switch, uh, limit switch, or normally close, let's say this time, just to do something different. If I just place this in here, when I come in here now, you're gonna see that you're not gonna get manufacturer, you're not gonna get catalog number or anything like that, right? Um, but if you go in here and you actually place it under limit switches again, normally closed, and you, uh, you, you actually come in here and go to look up, I could pick that same exact limit switch. I just know that this time I want to use the normally closed contact on that limit switch. And now I've got a, and it's asking me again. It says, hey, do you want to map it? No, prefer not to. If that was the only limit switch on the planet, I might, I might choose to map it. Or if we never used a different limit switch, I might choose to map it. Um, but for my case, I'm not going to do that. All right, and I'm going to, I am going to change my tag here just to get it to line up. Again, something I should look at when I'm placing these just to make sure my tags are appropriate here. All right, and then uh, let's do one proximity switch just to give it, again, a little bit more diversity of components. So I'll go to the icon menu and proximity switches are gonna be under miscellaneous. Uh, so they're right here. Uh, aren't they under miscellaneous? Uh-oh, uh where the heck are they hiding? Oh, miscellaneous switches, that's where they're at. You got miscellaneous, you got miscellaneous switches, so be careful there. So I'm gonna do a normally open proximity switch. I'll place this here. And I'll go to look up. I think they bring in a bunch of Eaton stuff when they do that. So inductive procs, and I got voltage ranges in here. I got all kinds of stuff. I got sensing distances, which would be very important. Uh, you know, PNP or MPN type sensor is something that we might be interested in as well. Uh, for this particular one, I'm just gonna pick the first one. Um, but but that may bring, and I won't map again, but that may bring up an important point here. Let's say uh, for some reason you've got a limit switch that uh, is not in that menu there. So I go to the DigiKey website here and we've decided we want to use this Omron limit switch. And the DigiKey part number is Z2421, but the manufacturer catalog or part number is E2K-X8MY1. So I can see all the information about this, this, uh, this sensor. And one of the things I like to do when I, when I do like the description of it is sometimes you get some really good descriptive data right on like the DigiKey website or if you're on a, oh, you know, if there's a different website they're using Viking Electric or, uh, you know, some other website or Allen Bradley site or something like that. Um, you can get some good data on this, on this. You can go into the data sheet, but usually just on that main page you can get Seems like a bad sensor to choose right now. First off, it's $200, and second off, they have one in stock, so I may not be able to get this. But for, for the use of this, this exercise, that's not really what I wanna show you. What I wanna show you is, I wanna show you what I would do if all of a sudden I wanted to insert this proximity switch, but I know that this proximity switch is not in the database. So as an example, I go to lookup, and all that's in the lookup is Eaton. Um, now there's going to be Omron in here because I've done this a couple times and I may have also even, uh, 
downloaded the Omron database now that I remember that. So I do have the Omron database, but let's pretend for a minute this, this particular proximity switch is not in the Omron database. If, if, uh, if, you've got a, if you don't have a database, uh, you can create a database um, by just creating a, a part. Um, so in here, what I do is I click on this little pencil in the upper right-hand corner here, which is to edit the catalog database. When you do that, it's going to create everything. Everything's going to go yellow on you. If you go way down to the bottom, right? If you go way down to the bottom, drag it way down the bottom. What you'll end up with is a little blank area here. And I can see I've done this several times now. E2K, I've taught this class many times, right? Um, so E2K, X8, MY. And so you'll see here, uh, this is E2K, X8, MY1. So I'm going to be on like, you know, version four or five of this thing now, right? Um, but that's fine. So what I'm going to do is I'll go back. And I'm going to start by typing in a part number. I'll, I'll do E2K. This may not be exactly how it is on the, on the uh, DigiKey page, just because I think I already have that one in my database here. Um, E2K. And it's X8MY1. E2K X8MY1. I know I've already got that in there, so I'm not going to type it in there. I'll type it in as a five or something, but in the real world, you'd want to use the exact part number. Um, Omron. And then this is that descriptive data. At this point, I might come in here and I might say, look, this is kind of my, my, my descriptive data. Um, I don't necessarily care about the IP66 rating. So you may, you may want to include that. You may want to take all of it. You may want to take this whole thing here and say, you know what? I want all of that descriptive data. You know, that's a good set of descriptive data that I can use in my description. So I'm just going to copy that stuff forward. And then I need to see, is this thing capacitive or inductive? Um, this is, well, it says right there, it says cap, but it also says capacitive down here, sensing distance eight millimeters. So I can see all of that on my sheet here. So it's capacitive, capacitive. And then uh, we'll go over a little further. There's more information we can put in here. So I might go into this data, this, uh, this voltage range. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, this is funny. Yeah, so this is not what I was expecting, but this is an SCR normally open. So this is a 90 VAC to 250 VAC. So first off, um, probably, not the, uh, probably not the sensor I want. <laughs> so let's, um, I'm, I'm doing a DC input here. Let's, let's find a capacitive. Uh, let's, let's type in proximity sensor so i just happened to fall on one there but i wasn't paying close attention to uh some of the data based upon that sensor so you'll get a little bit of a, a lesson here on uh on using the digikey website so i'll look at omron i'll look at in stock i'll look at capacitive but then i'll be sure that when i when i do this i'm also looking at a dc voltage range Oop, there we go there's a 12 to 24 uh, 10 to 40, that's probably a decent one. Let's see what we get for results here if I do this. Slowly but surely. Oh, that might get it. So apply all. So I've got a few of them here. So let's just pick one of these here. So this guy, uh, I prefer a PMP. Before, prefer a PMP because I'm switching 24 volts DC. So I need a sourcing sensor for a syncing input. So I'll, I'll pick uh, this guy right here. He looks like a just an awesome candidate for what we're doing here. So this is going to be my new manufacturer part number, this E2K. And so I'll go back into AutoCAD Electrical now, and I'll say, okay, that's not the one I'm using because that was an AC sensor. So I'm going to go back in here. It's still an E2K. It's still Omron. Um, but now it's a sensor prox capacitive. Three millimeter to 25 millimeter. That's a nice range there too. So I, I kind of like where that's heading. So let's go back in here. I'm going to paste that descriptive data in here. And then we'll scroll over. He is capacitive, but now he's actually got a voltage that's going to work for me. Uh, he's PMP, which the other one was SCR, which gave away that he was an AC sensor. Um, but now I can see the PMP, which gives away it's a DC sensor and it's 10 to 40 volts. So right, 10 to 40, I'm gonna use the same, I'm gonna try to use the same type of uh, syntax as what they're using in the database here. And now I wanna see like sensing range, the PMP is an important thing to know. So let's see what else we have here. So sensing range, 
we said was three to 25 millimeters uh, PMP normally open. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do three millimeter to 25 millimeter. Oop, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try to keep the same three millimeter to 25 millimeter. And then it was um, uh, PMP and it was normally open. So I'll do something like that. Um, you could put the wires in there. You could put this M12, which, you know, the diameter of this thing. You could do all this different stuff, right? Um, <clears throat> place to put other stuff in here. You even got something where you can put a web link in here, even if you wanted to. I'm going to call it good for right now. I'm just going to hit enter. And uh, should be good. And let's see if he took. Yeah, it's C25MF1. So I hit the little green check mark there, C25MF1. So when I was done, I hit the little, there was a little green check mark up here that I hit. And now I can see he's inserted in here. I can click on him and hit OK. Now by doing that, I've created a catalog part number. I also have that, that um, all that information is going to come for free now. If I hit OK, repeat, I, I could map it if I wanted to again, but I'm not going to. And if I insert another one of these, every time I insert it, and by the way, you could turn that off so you don't get that every time. But um, now I've got that nice sensor in there. And if I double click on him, I actually get that information that that 25 uh, MF1 has been inserted in my drawing. So all good on that. All right. So we've, we've, built, a, we've built a system. Um, oh, one of the things I don't like, let me show you right now, is especially when you're doing the homework for this class, it's very important that you're not pet peeve of mine, if anything is I don't like seeing rungs wired up for inputs that are unused. So if you have unused inputs, it's very important to get rid of those. Um, one of the ways I get rid of those, you know, you can, this is where the crossing selection tool actually comes in a little bit handy because I think if I click that, it'll actually get rid of those little nodes. No, it didn't get rid of little nodes. So a couple ways you can go about this, right? You can, uh, you could, you know, just draw a diagram over that with a window selection and a crossing selection here. And you get rid of all those things. Um, oops. Crossing selection. Delete. Um, what I just want to do is I want to show unused inputs as not used. You know, I've even gone so far as people have clicked on here, you know, and they've put another tag in here. Like, um, I think you put it under like description. Uh, just find another description tag and type in like unused, right? Um, <clears throat> that's something you could do. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, looks like I put that in a weird spot, though. I don't like where that ended up. So that was for... I'm going to hit OK. Really, what I'm talking about is down here, right? So that's 11. And if I go right here, we'll put it over there. Let's find out. Hit OK. Yeah, so now it's showing unused. And you could put, you know, you could do that for every single one of these if you wanted to, right? You could go in here and you could do this for this one, call it unused. Um, I'm not going to go through the, the pain of showing, well, maybe I will. There's only three more of them. So I might go here and do unused. Um, I, you know, it's probably sufficient there to to do that um but you get the idea there all right so now so now what's going to be nice i don't know why it's driving me nuts but let's this is this so it sometimes gets into the hassle with uh with doing autocad electrical you look at something and you go down this rabbit hole of i wasn't even going to list one of them and now i find myself liking the way it looks so i'm going to go in here and i'm going to list all of them um that's two minutes of my time i'll never get back but uh, oop, that time I did it different. That time it actually listed it on the input there. So I want to be careful that I'm putting it on the description and not the tag. The tag then uh, gets overwritten with that. So you could put them there. It wouldn't be a big deal. But I'm, I want to show that that's the address. And then I'm just showing over here that that is an unused address. All right. Now the beauty of this. This is where it becomes so valuable to you. If you spent all this work building this thing, right? And now you're like, boy, I really would love to just have a bill of materials. So you know, as the person wiring up the panel can go and just select all the materials they need, um, wire up the panel, and they, they know they've got all the right part numbers, right? <clears throat> so where, where AutoCAD's so powerful is all, are all the databases that kind of 
I know they're, it's like peeling an onion almost, right? There's, there's layer upon layer upon layer. So because I've, I've built that catalog data into these devices, I can now go up here and I can find the reports tab and then I can go to reports. And when I go to reports, I can see I have this bill of materials and there's all kinds of other stuff I can do as well. We won't get into that today. And I'm only gonna look at a bill of material for the active drawing. Um, you can do a bill of material for the entire project um, or you can do it for the active drawing. Um, so I'm gonna do it for the active drawing, bill of material, I'm gonna hit okay. It's gonna ask you, hey, you know, I wanna do this queue save, you know. Anytime you do a major modification like this, it just becomes a point where it can do the save point. And I would say, sure, that sounds like a good idea. I've got a lot of work into this thing. Do that little save for me there. And then, uh, and then it's gonna say, okay, here's what your report's gonna look like. And I could add things like time, date, title lines, project lines, I can squeeze. But here's what I wanna do. We're just gonna put it on the drawing. Let's just put this thing on the drawing. So I'm gonna hit put on drawing and I'm gonna hit okay. Now here's where it gets a little funky, right? Is this thing comes in and I'm gonna place it. I'm just gonna place it. What you'll notice though, is it's like too big. So the it's, it's beautiful. Um, the problem is it's too big. And what I, what I see people doing is they're like, oh, I'm gonna click over here. I'm gonna try to find a resizing handle and see if I can do that type of stuff. That, that's fine, um, but you don't need to do that. What you can do is just use your Windows selection tool, mouse over that guy, and then um, right click on any blue part of that border. Oop, I missed him there. So you can always zoom in if you need to. Right click on any line in there and go to scale. And when you go to scale, what you do then is you use your left mouse button, you hold it. You can make this thing as big or as small as you want. So it looks to me like I got a little bit of room here. I'm gonna click like that and click okay. And if I mouse over it again and I right click on it again and I go to move, now I can just put him wherever I want. And he's actually still a little bigger than I might like. Um, so scaling is nice. Um, but again, just a hair too big. Might be able to get this fixed up with uh, clicking over here and seeing if I can drag this in. I'll try. This usually goes worse than the other way does. But yeah, let's see. No, nope, don't want to do that. Ease, just easiest to scale. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag them. I'm going to grab them one more time like this. The window selection tool ensures I only get him. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to scale, but I'm going to scale him to about like that. And now I can put this guy anywhere I want. And to be honest with you, I don't much mind where he's at right now. He looks like, looks like a nice drawing here. Um, I can see that I've got all my PLC stuff over here. So I've got my, uh, my, uh, my rails, my power rails are inserted here. I've got my PLC catalog number inserted here. I've got all my components. And now if I scroll into here, you're gonna see a couple other things here too. You're gonna to see, not only do you see the components we placed in there. So limit switch 10, six and seven are all catalog number CR115, they're GE limit switches. Push buttons three, four and five are Allen Bradley push buttons with that catalog number. Push button one is an Allen Bradley catalog number. Uh, 800H BR61 gives me all the information. Push, bu push button two is a slightly different one. I can see that my MicroLogix or my my compact slash you know whatever 1769 IQ16 PLC input module. I've got that catalog part number here too. So if I needed to look at that and say, God, I wonder if I can get one of those. You know, you could literally go on and type in 1769 uh, IQ16. You know, I just go in here and look look right off the bat. I can I can find this this part like in 10 seconds, right? I mean, Google is my best friend at this point. There's the part, right? And it could be used with a MicroLogix, could be used with a Compact Logix, could be used uh, with a couple different styles of PLCs. But I get all of that stuff, including, you'll remember this C25MF1. That's an Omron sensor we found on DigiKey. And what you'll notice is, the description I built for this thing looks just as good as the stuff that's in that pre-built pre database there, right? So this is exactly what I'd be looking for you to do for a project like this. And mind you, we can do this with input devices. We can do this with output devices. So don't think that it's uh, you know, something that you can't do on either side. It's totally something we can build uh, for either side. So I just wanted to go through and make sure that we had this kind of looking right. 
yeah, that, that looks like that's about it. Um, so anyways, I will post the homework. Um, I don't anticipate any problems with the homework for this week. But as, as always, if you have any questions on any of this stuff, uh, feel free to respond via email or you know shoot me a message or whatever the case may be. Thanks.